Welcome to part four of First Aid Embryology, brought to you by Falcon. Let's begin with GI embryology. Foregut, pharynx to duodenum. Midgut includes duodenum to the transverse colon, proximal portion. The hindgut would include distal transverse colon to the rectum. Developmental defects of anterior abdominal wall due to failure of the following. Rostral fold closure, sternal defects, lateral fold closure, omphalocele, gastroschisis, caudal fold closure, bladder extrophy. Duodenal atresia, failure to recanalize, often seen with Down syndrome, trisomy 21. Jejunal ileal colonic atresia due to vascular accident, apple peel atresia. Midgut development. During the sixth week, midgut herniates through umbilical ring. Tenth week, it returns to abdominal cavity, plus it rotates around the superior mesenteric artery. Pathology, of course, would then include malrotation of the midgut, omphalocele, intestinal atresia, or stenosis, and volvulus. In the margin, gastroschisis. Please be able to differentiate this from omphalocele. Gastroschisis, extrusion of abdominal contents through abdominal folds not covered by peritoneum. Whereas in phallocele, persistence of herniation of abdominal contents into umbilical cord covered by peritoneum. Our discussion now takes us to tracheoesophageal fistula. Abnormal connection between esophagus and trachea. Most common subtype is blind upper esophagus with lower esophagus connected to the trachea, resulting therefore in cyanosis, choking, vomiting with feeding, air bubble in the stomach on chest x-ray, polyhydromnios due to lack of swallowing amniotic fluid, failure to pass nasogastric tube into stomach, and lastly, pneumonitis. Please refer to the illustration below. Congenital pyloric stenosis. Hypertrophy of the pylorus causes obstruction. So think about where the pylorus is, distal end of the stomach, distal to the antrum, just before entering the first part of the duodenum. Palpable olive mass in epigastric region and non-bilis projectile vomiting. Has not had a chance to accumulate bile in the vomit, non-bilis. At approximately two weeks of age, treatment is surgical incision occurs in approximately 1 in 600 live births often in firstborn males. Pancreas and spleen embryology. Pancreas, derived from the foregut. Dorsal and ventral pancreatic buds contribute to the pancreatic head, uncinate process, lower half of the head, and main pancreatic duct. Please refer to the illustration below. Dorsal pancreatic bud becomes everything else, which includes the body, the tail, the isthmus, and the accessory pancreatic duct. Let's take a look at some pathologies. Annular pancreas, around something, annular, like an annular napkin ring. Ventral pancreatic bud abnormally encircles second part of the duodenum, so therefore literally choking it, forms a ring of pancreatic tissue that may cause duodenal narrowing. Pancreatic divism, ventral and dorsal parts fail to fuse at eight weeks. The spleen development. Arises from dorsal mesentery, hence is mesodermal, but is supplied by artery of foregut, which would be the celiac artery. Renal embryology. Let's begin with pronephros. Week four, then degenerates. Mesonephros. Functions as interim kidney for first trimester, later contributes to male genital system. Metanephros. Permanent. Permanent. Meta. Beginning first appeared during fifth week of gestation. Nephrogenesis continues through 32 through 36 weeks of gestation. Uteric bud. Derived from caudal end of mesonephros, gives rise to ureter, the pelvises, remember, these are in the kidneys, and through branching, calluses and collecting ducts, fully canalized by 10th week. Metanephric mesenchyme. Ureteric bud interacts with this tissue. Interaction induces differentiation formation of glomerulus and renal tubules to distal 
convoluted tubule. Aberrant interaction between these two tissues may result in several congenital malformation of the kidney. Uteropelvic junction with the kidney last to canalize. So think about what's going on. The utero-pelvic junction with the kidney. Most common site of obstruction resulting in hydronephros in fetus. Please refer to the illustration below. You'll notice degenerated pronephros, mesonephros, the metanephros, which was permanent, the metanephric duct, the urogenital sinus. Potter syndrome, bilateral renal agenesis. If the kidneys are not there, you're not able to synthesize urine, resulting in oligohydromnios. Limb deformities, facial deformities, pulmonary hypoplasia, caused by malformation of uretric bud. Babies who can't pee in utero develop potters. Horseshoe kidney. Inferior poles of both kidneys fuse. As they ascend from the pelvis during fetal development, horseshoe kidneys get trapped under inferior mesenteric artery and remain low in the abdomen. Kidney functions normally, however. So if you look at the illustration, there is the inferior lobes of the kidney, and they have come together and connected inferior to the inferior mesenteric artery. Our discussion now brings us to genital embryology. In the female, default development. It is a default development. Mesonephric duct degenerates and paramesonephric duct develops. How do you get a male? SRY gene on Y chromosome produces testis determining factor. Testis development. Also, remember, a female is the default development, so therefore the male has to develop something that will resist it. Malaria inhibitory factor from Sertoli cells is exactly that hormone. It suppresses development of the paramesonephric ducts. Increased androgens from where? Latic cells stimulates development of mesonephric duct. What is the mesonephric duct, also known as a Wolfian duct? Develops into male internal structures, except the prostate, including seminal vesicle, epididymis, ejaculatory ducts, and ductus or vas deferens. The paramesonephric, also known as a Mullerian duct, develops into female internal structures, the fallopian tube, uterus, upper third of the vagina, lower two-thirds of the urogenital sinus. Now let's take a look at the margin. The mesonephric duct must be induced to remain. Default program for embryo development is for paramesonephric duct, therefore development into a female. The mnemonic for the male internal structure except the prostate includes seed, seminal vesicle, epididymis, ejaculatory duct, ductus deferens. Very down below, if you use this illustration along with the one with renal embryology, paramesonephric duct, also known as a Mullerian duct, developed into female internal structures, which include fallopian tube, uterus, upper third of the vagina, lower two thirds from urogenital sinus. Bicornuate uterus results from incomplete fusion of the paramesonephric duct. So from the illustration above, if the paramesonephric or Mullerian duct does not fuse, then you'll have a bicornuate uterus associated with urinary tract abnormalities and infertility. On this slide, we'll discuss male-female genital homologs. Let's begin with the illustration. There is the genital tubercle, urogenital sinus, the urogenital fold, and the labio-scrotal swelling. On the left is a category for males. There is the genital structures in the middle, and the female homologs on the right. The two hormones 
include dihydrotestosterone for males, estrogen for females. Remember that dihydrotestosterone is responsible for the development of external male structures as a result of converting testosterone into DHT via 5-alpha reductase. Genotubercle, with the help of DHT, develops into glans penis. The female counterpart, with the help of estrogen, glans clitoris. Genotubercle, DHT, corpus cavernosum, and spongiosum, structural units of the penis, and female vestibular bulbs. The urogenital sinus. In males, bulbo urethral glands of Cowper. In females, greater vestibular glands of Bartholin. Urogenital sinus. In males, prostate gland. In females, urethral and paraurethral glands of Skeen. Urogenital folds. In males, with the help of DHT, ventral shaft of penis, penile urethra. Remember, the urethra is broken down into three different parts. And in females, it is the labia minora. The labia scrotal swelling in males will be the scrotum. Females, the labia majora. Congenital penile abnormalities, hypospadia. Take a look at this illustration to the left, please. Normally, would be the dotted line in which opening should be through the glans penis. However, hypospadia is opening of the urethra on the ventral side. Abnormal opening of penile urethra on inferior or ventral side of penis due to failure of urethral folds to close. Epispadia, urethra opens on the superior or dorsal side of the penis due to faulty positioning of genital tubercle. So one would be due to failure of urethral folds to close, and that's hypospadia. Inferior ventral epispadia is dorsal or superior due to faulty positioning of the genital tubercle. And please refer to the illustration on the previous slide for genital tubercle. In the margin, hypospadias is more common than epispadia. Fix hypospadias to prevent urinary tract infections. Hypo is below. Extrophy of the bladder is associated with epispadia. When you have epispadias, you hit your eye when you pee. Descent of testes and ovaries. Gubernaculum, band of fibrous tissue. Remember this as being descent of the testes or ovaries. In males, especially with the inguinal canals. The female remnant of the gubernaculum ovarian ligament plus the round ligament of uterus. The male remnant will be anchors of testis with the scrotum. Processus vaginalis, evagination of peritoneum. In females, it is obliterated. The male remnant, it is the tunica vaginalis. This now concludes the fourth and final part of embryology and all of first aid embryology. If you do have any questions, please refer to Falcon Online. This is Dr. Carlo Raj. Thank you.